Guys, this is my third uh, attempt at making this video and the third video that I make in chronological order from the uh, Transylvania International Film Festival 2019 in Cluj, Romania. I've got a lot to say and I really don't want to make this video too long because I realize that I can just go on and on and on. And also, like I said, this is my third attempt at making the video and I'm going a bit crazy at the moment. But I thought this was a video worth making because it's about a film that I watched here at the festival and it's, uh, it's probably one of the best, it's probably the best film that I've seen all year. Uh, so far of the new films I'm talking about but uh, and not only that I think it's one of the best films that I've seen all year old and new and uh, yeah and it's called uh, without further ado it's called System Crasher and it's by director Nora Fingscheid and it's a German drama I hope I'm pronouncing the director's name right because uh, she's definitely worth checking out and I hope that people you know will check out this film in particular and uh, I, but before I start talking about it like this is not a film review by the way so I'm not going to be reviewing the film but I'm going to give you the, my thoughts on it I think it's important as well to understand where I was at uh, while I went in to watch the film and as I'm talking I'm saying this I realize that I am wearing a hat because my hair is too messy it's really warm outside and uh, it's my hair has gone greasy with all the hair product that I put on it I should probably watch wash my hair but uh, <laughs> yeah I don't I don't have time and uh, I should probably get a haircut either way so where was I at watching uh, System Crasher well, let me just say that I made a video uh, about my experience going to see the Agnes Varda from Cleo uh, from 5 to 7 uh, the day before I watched System Crasher, which was a film that I had loved 10 years ago when I first saw it and I never saw again until 10 years later, well, you know, a few days ago, two days ago at this point here in Cluj. And I was kind of afraid, would I like it? Uh, would I not like it? Would I not love it? Because I remember actually loving that film and it being one of the films that I thought about the most in every year afterwards. Um, well, I shouldn't have been worried because as it turned out, I actually loved it even more. But uh, also just as important was the ex experience of going to the screening before the Barda film. And that screening was um, of, a f of a documentary that was about children. And for this reason, some parents just saw it fit to kind of take their children along with them. So I noticed that there was a few good few kids at this screen at the screening of this documentary more than you would see in your average non Pixar sort of art house house ish a movie uh, but it was actually a quite a dull film I mean the, what it was talking about was interesting but I can just imagine the child not you know being bored out of their heads you know just just completely dulled out by this movie because you know it's it's challenging but not in a, in a very stimulating way especially not for a child and I wondered as well well I mean the sad thing for me is that no one no kid watching that watched that film was was going to be interested in finding out more about this particular different a particularly different style of film from the one that they're always stuck watching often because their parents make them watch it by the way because I'm actually a firm believer of the fact that kids don't need to just watch Pixar movies or superhero films, but they're just the movies that you know grown-ups show them. You know, they're more they're more willing to show them that type of film or you know, certain teen movies or comedies and stuff like that. You know, that are really silly. And to be fair, like you know, I actually really really believe that children are way more intelligent in their perception of the arts than we are. So they're well able to watch not every film that has mature more mature what would we would call mature content. But a lot of it, yeah, for sure. So they, would they be able to enjoy the Varda film? My argument is that they would be. Would they understand it the way in which it is supposed to be perceived? I don't think that they would see it in the way and, and read the messages that Varda was particularly trying to put across. But they would. I, I think that they would enjoy it. And they would, they would pick out parts of it and they would understand it in a different way from a grown-up. And the reason why I know that is because I realized that there, there were things upon second viewing, 10 years later from my original viewing of the film, that I noticed watching it 10 years later. And I believe that the only reason why I understood them better was simply because I was older and I had lived a longer. And I had lived more and I had been through a lot more experiences that helped me understand it better. So just to, to kind of cut the long story short, uh, it was kind of sad for me to see that these kids who, you know, probably don't get to go to the cinema to watch anything beyond the Pixar and Disney films, uh, that actually 
got to, to watch a movie that was a little different from their, what they usually watch in the cinema weren't going to become particularly passionate about cinema because they were taken to a film that was boring. Long story short, you know, it was an interesting theme, but it was a boring movie. And it was very dry and it was very dull. And it's, the type of, it's not the type of film that would get anyone passionate about cinema. So, um, when, I, when things like that happen to me, given the fact that, you know, the documentary that I talked about was a contemporary movie, when, things, when I experience things like that, I start to believe that, you know, really cinema is in a sorry state. Because not only do people not perceive it as something that's particularly interesting or worthy of, our, of anyone's attention compared to even YouTube videos um, or anything like that, you know, or TV content or, you know, TV series or Netflix series or whatever. Uh, yeah, I forgot what I, well, I, I, I forgot where I was going with that. So I obviously I don't do editing in the video. So part of my rants on YouTube is that, um, you know, I sometimes forget about what, what I'm talking about. It's hard for me to keep track of what I'm saying. But anyways, cut the long story short. Oh yeah, I was saying whenever I experience things like that, it gets me down because I don't know what I'm doing. Like... Critics, critics have this tendency to like think that they know everything. I mean, to praise the things that are that can only be decodified if you have the right set of tools that will help you decodify the code that is concealed in the arts. And this is a theory that I borrowed from Pierre Bourdieu, Bourdieu who help, really helped me see, uh, open my eyes to what's going on. And what's going on is that the, the art that critics love to praise is the art that they feel like they have the right tool set to understand better than most people. Things are changing nowadays because criticism is becoming of the more people. But then what you get is people being really like fa the fanboys, which are just as uh, annoying to me because they come up with their own set of tools that, you know, where, with which they claim to understand a movie like Star Wars better than anybody else. So, I mean, this is an argument that, that I could go on and on and on and on about. But uh, my point is that it gets me down because I don't want a cinema. I don't want to promote a cinema that is bad just because it has, it, it's interesting to anyone who has the right codes to, to read it. I mean, I'm uh, between Godard and Truffaut, for those of you who are film, more film savvy, I am definitely more a Truffaut fan. You know, Godard, I love, his, I love a lot of his works, but I also understand that he's in no way better than Truffaut simply because of his self-indulgence. Right. So uh, sometimes I'm upset by the fact that he's basically the first, the, 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 the last living legend from the French New Wave to still be with us. But uh, and if you think that I'm, you know, I'm kind of exaggerating with that, you know, you should also think that I'm a firm believer of the fact that Varda, Truffaut and all those people aren't really dead. And I don't just mean spiritually, but I actually think they're alive, just like Elvis is alive and just like all those people are alive. But because I like to think that and also because I'm, I'm nuts. Uh, but s thankfully, how long has this video been going for? Thankfully, and I'm not going to be too long given a review of this film because this is not a film review and I don't particularly want my videos to be reviews as such, but just thoughts that are inspired by the films that I talk about. Thankfully, me watching a film like System Crasher is exciting to me because um, it encourages me. It encourages my commitment to, to, to promoting arts and especially films, which is something that I've been doing for five years and film is something that I have studied in third level education and even before I even knew that you could study films. Um, it's just something that I've been into all my life, you know? And, uh, and sometimes I just get so down when I watch a bad film, you know, even if it's on movie that, I mean, they're the kings of streaming, of film streaming, of shitty film streaming. Like they think that they're fil the films that they show are amazing just because they're sophisticated and just because they're a little out there. But you know, I'm not gonna pay nine, I'm not gonna pay 10 euro a month to, to watch them. I mean, I am, but is, a, is an average person, is a normal person who isn't necessarily into Godard gonna pay, gonna pay that much money to watch? And by the way, Mubi is crazy about the French films. They show too many French films compared to all of the other nationalities. But and this is another rant. Well, this film actually happens not to be French. It's a, it's a, it's a German film. It's a German drama. And there, there's some amazing things here. Well, first of all, the word that came to my mind while I was watching it is to describe it 
was pure film power. It's not a word, it's a phrase. I don't know what it is, it's a couple of words. Two words, but yeah, pure film power. Because it is, you just feel, it's one of those films that you feel in your body and it makes your, your thoughts race through your mind like a jar of flies. It just buzzes, basically. The, it's like watching a, especially if you watch it in the cinema, if you get that experience. I mean, it's shifts of rhythm, it's, it's style, it's characters, the tension of the story, and also the meaningfulness of the story. The fact that it doesn't look down on its audience, that it actually, you know, tries to help them see things from the different characters' perspectives. And, and it's just closer to the audience than another film that would have looked down on, on a spectator would have been like, uh, that, that, those things matter. Those things matter. Because also this film is not a commercial film. Like you don't know exactly where the film is going to take you basically. I mean, that's not a bad thing. Again, you know, I get, I get stuck saying these things, you know, because it's not like I'm saying that a film that you can predict, it can't be also good. But I mean, I'm talking about the fact that, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be that the film is a well-rounded, well-structured story that we know how it's going to end up, that we know that everybody's going to be okay or everyone is going to die. It's fine. You can have a film like that only if it's creative and only if there's enough in it that we can talk about and that we can discuss and that can really make us passionate about it, right? So, I mean, given the fact that I am a strong believer in, the fa in, 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 uh, in cinema being a subjective art, like all of the arts, and everyone has their own tastes, you know, the reason why I like System Crasher is because it can literally be seen by just about anyone. Except, I'm, I'm sure that adults would be, I mean, would think this not a children's film and to many in many ways yes it's not a children's film but it can be seen by children not only because its protagonist is a nine-year-old child so let me just go over the story a little bit i'm not particularly good at doing the synopsis outline but i'm going to try and say what it's about very basically the film is about a nine-year-old girl who has um behavioral problems she has these sudden fits of anger she's she can be very violent and she has she just generally has a lot of energy inside of her that sometimes that just leads her to be very violent and dangerous to anyone around her her mother is even afraid of her everyone really around her doesn't know what to do with her child protection services uh call her a system crasher which is where the title of the film comes from because they just don't know what to do with her the establishment and the grown-ups are just unable to understand how to help this little girl. But at the same, and at the same time, those who do help her uh, understand that they may be getting too close to her. At some point, one of the one of the main characters who really, really start, you know, has a close relationship with her, you know, he says that he has rescue fantasies, and that's I think a phrase that I've never heard anyone say before, especially related to a child. But I can see that being a problem. I can understand that. It helps me see, uh, it helps me look at things in a, in, a different, in a different way. It helps me understand these things, right? But, you know, given the fact that it talks about one of the themes that uh, I care about, I think I care about the most and I believe is not talked about enough, is never talked about enough. I mean, can you think, children, child welfare should be talked about way more than, than, what, than, than so many other themes that make the rounds of all of the publication and all media every day of our lives that mostly deal with grown-ups. The only times when I really hear about child welfare regularly is when it's not even child, child welfare. Like the only times I can think of us talking about children is when we're talking about whether it's okay to abort them or not. Which is like an old debate where we should really be discussing all every day of our lives in one way or another and we should always be aware of is what we do with the kids once they're born because clearly a film like system crash highlights the fact that we don't understand what to do like we don't it's such a complex issue that if we even try to understand what we can do um we're still way off but a film like this can help us because there's so much in it that help, and, and the perspective of it is like sometimes it, it's like it takes the viewpoint of the uh it uses the viewpoint of the child it's herself, who is just, it's like if you've seen uh, uh, The Wild Child by Francois Truffaut, it's kind of like that. It's not like it's a film with conclusions. It shows possible situations and scenarios of dealing with this particular situation that you don't even think about in your everyday life. Like we're always thinking, as grown-ups, and I'm putting myself in there, that we're somehow entitled. 
Whereas the only people I believe that are really entitled are children. They are the only people who are entitled to be... S I mean, everyone is entitled to be safe, but children are actually entitled to be happy as well, right? Because if they're not happy and they're not inspired to, to, to you know, know what to do, then that's a problem because they're the future generations. And I'm saying a lot of like things that everyone knows in their heart to be true. And it's it sounds very simple to say. I mean, it, it's, it really sounds like I'm being completely obvious and I'm saying obvious things. But I feel like sometimes we forget that. And a film that is, is as powerful as this needs also, also stands as a document uh, and as a starting point for us to discuss these things. That's the power of cinema. But another power of cinema is that this film can also be celebrated as a wonderful piece of cinematic, the cinematic art. Back in the French New Wave, just using the Varda example, what I tried to say, and I think I did quite poorly in my previous video, was that one of the great things about the French New Wave was that it wasn't just about the story that was very often coming from a place of deep thought, not about the film itself, but just thought in general, because the 60s were just, was just a time when people were thinking and they were talking more. Like now we're thinking what we're, what we're taught to think. I feel like anyways, I mean, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's my opinion. But, um, and it wasn't just that though. It was also like being spontaneous and creative with the techniques of filmmaking that had come out. Like people weren't just doing the things the way that they were supposed to be made. There was people in trolleys and, pe and being pushed while holding a camera. And that was like the new tracking shot. That's like homemade filmmaking. So being creative with like editing and stuff like that without losing the plot, without going overboard, with having the complete balance of technique, technical creativity, spontaneity, and all of these things, is just as important as actually having something to say because it helps you communicate that message. But it's not just communicating that message because maybe you're not able to communicate that message, but you're able to communicate a message to have that reaction. I don't want to be bored. I mean, if, I, if I'm bored in the cinema, there has to be a reason for me being bored. Like a, um, a film by Tsai Ming, Ming Liang, for example, can be, bo can be seen as a boring film, but it's actually the most exciting thing because if, film, be, because, um, because the, 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 the silences and the long shots, maybe the long takes that seem to be, exist for no reason within that film, actually lead you to think, actually are beautiful to look at. There's some of the images that, that you've never seen before. They're more exciting than the most exciting special effects or CGI effects that you can see in a Marvel movie, right? And I, know, I don't want to come across as snobbish towards Mar Marvel movies and Pixar movies because I know that they have, there's some beauty in them and there's something to them. But usually, you know, we just watch too much of them and I would like to, for, us, for everyone to be aware of the fact that there is more films out there for us to see. But finally, like without getting too lost, I mean, I understand, I, I see that in, in System Crasher. I see all of that in it. I also see a filmmaker, Nora Fingscheid, who is absolutely in control of what she does. Because she may not even, I mean, it's the confidence more than being in control. Because I also see this film as being very open to, 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 to on the moment documentation of things that happen on the set. I mean, this is, this is the reason why we still make fiction films nowadays. Because fiction films themselves can really look like completely artificial and dated. This is real. But I also want to say, and I'm going to end it with this because I think I've, I unfortunately went way too over the time. I mean, I just go on and on. But I, I mean, I hope that some people out there, I don't even care if it's 10 people that, that watch the whole film at some point in their lives. But these are the thoughts that I'm documenting. And I really don't want my films to be viral. Like, actually, I'm more charmed by thinking that perhaps they'll be seen by few people and then we can start a we can we could, we could have a little film family you know a little film close circle like an, an AA meeting of, of uh, cinephiles that you know, would love to talk about movies in a different way and share their own ideas but this is what I think I want to end it on I, I <clears throat> if I was a president of the world <laughs> which I'm clearly not or am I um, no definitely not if I was the president of the world, I would encourage people to, I would just go use my platforms to encourage people to watch this film. I would make sure that it would get got as much exposure as po possible and that as many pe people as possible watched System Crusher. Why am I so passionate about this film? I've mentioned a lot of reasons, but another reason why I'm passionate about it is because I'm not just passionate for, I, I don't just, I wouldn't just like people to see it. I would also love to see kids see it. 
But if you see this film, there's a lot of violence and there's, and there's a lot of violence. There's some violence. There's some blood, uh, even. There's some themes that are scary. Sometimes it's scary and it's shocking. But it's a strong experience. And we should not shy, shy away. We should not overprotect children from what they see. We should not s prevent them from seeing a film that is re really rewarding and exposes truths uh, of the world in general. Uh, even, even if it may seem, it do so in a, in a shocking way sometimes. This is, this is why cinema is there. Why do we watch films? Why do we watch videos of any kind? We watch them. Why do we exp try to experience that? We, we, we want to see. I believe that it's because we want to see a part of ourselves that it is reflected within them and that reassures us and that makes us feel safe and that makes us feel like we're part of a community. A lot of the, th the best of times in films, especially, and especially when we witness it in the cinema, are from, come from moments where we, uh, we see things, we understand things about the world around us and ourselves that we didn't know anyone else felt or that we didn't know was a common thing to experience and blah, blah, blah. So even if, so that's why children should watch this, I think. It's because not just the protagonist is a nine-year-old child, but also because they would probably understand it in a better way than we would, we as grown-ups. I've seen some reviews of the film, and some of them are talking about, you know, I, I read one about by, by a critic that I particularly admire, actually, so this is not a dig at him. But um, he was saying that this film uh, is, it, you're going to love this film, uh, you know, whether you love this film or not depends on whether you think that uh, child welfare, in child welfare, it is... Um, one-on-one -on -one, uh, mentoring or tutoring or just care giving is more affecting than you know group uh, caregiving something like that I hope I make sense of that statement because I'm completely paraphrasing I think that's not true because this is not a film that gives you absolute truths and in fact narrowing a film down to this is you know whether you like it or not if you like it or not, completely depends on this is, is crazy because I ideologically disagree with many of my favorite films. Uh, but that doesn't stop me from, from appreciating them and celebrating for what, them from what they are and from, from making me think. And so, but, but the, re the fact that, you know, adult film critics are, are saying things like that about films, not just this film, but a lot of films makes me think that you know children have such a, a more natural reaction to to movies that if you if you showed them a film like this they might be able to come up with a conclusion they might be able to have they they, they, they maybe have something to say because they know what's going on they they they, they understand they're you know nine year olds for example watching a, nine, a film about a nine year old even if they they don't have the problems that you know little what is her name um, uh, Bianca? No, no, not Bianca. I don't know. How come it doesn't say in the front? Benny, Benny, Benny. Little Benny. They don't have the same problem. Even though a nine-year-old watching this film doesn't have the same problem as nine-year-old Benny. She is... That nine-year-old is... Um, is going to have a nine-year-old's life. And she's going to be... You know, it's... She might have something... She might be able to contribute to the dialogue, to the discourse. You know, just because children are children, it doesn't mean that they can't just contribute to society. Don't underestimate them. Um, I hope my points about this film weren't all over the place. And I know, like I said, this is, this is not a series that is a film review. That, this is not a film review series. I'm not interested. I'm not particularly interested in doing film reviews, to be honest. Because, like I said, film, film, uh, the review reviewing is such an adult thing to do that... Um, I'm not interested in it too much. I would rather talk about, I would rather like document my thoughts about a particular film or just uh, thoughts that I've had after attending a particular screening. And I'm telling you, System, but I, but I will say this, I recommend anyone to watch System Crasher. I just, I looked on MDB and it doesn't even reach the 8.0 mark. Ratings are ridiculous. So don't, don't, don't even look. I mean, this this habit of looking at 
ratings before you watch a film or just trusting ratings or even trusting critics to see if we are going to like a film. That is bullshit. <laughs> you know. So, but, but if you would be willing to take a recommendation from me, I would so recommend you to watch System Crasher. I mean, especially if you like Truffaut films. Uh, I, I see Truffaut in this film and that's, that's not a bad thing by any means. Francois Truffaut. Um, yeah, um, yeah, this video, as expected, went way over, but, um, and I have to, I probably, I'm probably in trouble because what time is it? I've got a bit of time, I guess, left. Till the next, uh, uh so I'm going to be interviewing, uh, the director of this film, Nora, uh, Finkscheid. I hope I'm saying her name right, um, for Fred Film Radio. Just between you and me, this interview was already done by someone else in Fred Film Radio at the Berlin Film Festival this year, which is where the film premiered. I didn't know it, but I'm not going to cancel it because I really want to meet her and I want to shake her hand and I want to say that uh, she did a, I think she did a fantastic job and I actually want to thank her because watching the right film at the right time can really lift your spirits up. I'm very, very motivated, motivated and encouraged. What I'm afraid of is that now the next film I watch will be completely disappointing. Final note. I think that, uh, you know, I'm not making a, a video about every film that I'm watching here in Transylvania, but I was able to get a ticket to this film. This film, The Goddess. Where is it? Can you see it? I don't think you can see it. But it's a, yeah, it's called The Goddess. And uh, if you don't, it's a, it, I, the hint is that it's a Chinese film. It's going to be a special screen that I'm hopefully going to make a video for to document my reactions after it. And it's going to be, I'm, I'm hoping, an amazing experience. So I'm not going to say any more about that. But um, guys, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. Sorry about the hat again, but my hair was completely messy and greasy and I, and I disgusted myself. So I don't want you guys to throw up watching a, movie, watching a video of me. Uh, and also my beard is out of control. I look like a bum. <laughs> I look like a bum. Bye, guys.